Hi, Timothy Unkert here. In this video, we're going to create a program in Python that finds the area under a curve. Now we're talking about a simple curve like x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, so on. We're going to have the user be able to enter in a value for the power, say two, three, or four, and we're going to make the user enter in a number. We're also going to have the user enter in a lower value uh, for the curve uh, where we want to find the area and a higher value as well. And we're going to make the user enter numbers for that as well. So we're going to use try accept statements in Python to do that. But first, let's talk about the math that we need to know before we start this Python program. So what I've got here is a y equals x squared curve. And this gray area here that's highlighted, let's say we want to find that area. Well, in mathematics, that's the integral from the lower end, which is 0, to the upper end, which is an x value of 2, of what this curve, uh, what y is equal to. So y is equal to x squared in this curve. So if x squared with respect to x, which we write with this, what looks like dx here. Okay, so the way we can find that uh, is we take basically what's called an antiderivative. So in calculus, you have, when you take a derivative of something, you have this uh, rule called the power rule. So when you have something simple like x cubed and you take the, uh, so let's focus down here. So if you have x cubed, uh, and you take the derivative of that, you take this power 3, put it in front of the x, or multiply it times whatever number is in front of here. So because there's no number written, it's 1. So 3 times 1, we put a 3 here. So we have 3x, and we drop this by a power of 1. So it becomes 3x squared. So that's the derivative of x cubed. We want to take the antiderivative of x squared. So what would, if, if we had uh, some a value of x raised to some uh, power, how would we take the derivative of that and end up with x squared? Okay, so let me erase this. So we're obviously going to start with x cubed because we want this to be x squared, right? So we'd start with uh, x cubed. But remember, we bring this 3 in front. So we have 3x squared, right? When we take the derivative, 3x squared. But we just want x squared. We don't want 3x squared. So we have to start with x cubed over 3, because when we bring the 3 down, it'll be 3x squared over 3, right? So we can cancel these out. We get our x squared, which is what we want. So this x cubed over 3, I hope this makes sense, is the antiderivative of x squared, OK? Now, there's one more thing that I'm leaving out, and that's plus a constant. Because when you take a derivative of a constant, like let's say 2, the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change of 2 is 0, right? So um, even though this is, we can treat this as x squared plus 0. So really, if we really want the antiderivative of this, we're going to write x cubed over 3 plus some un unknown constant, which I'll just write as a capital C. Now, here's the thing. For these types of problems and for our program, this doesn't matter. We can ignore this constant. The reason being is we're going to evaluate this 
x cubed over 3 at 2, and then we're going to subtract over x cubed over 3 uh, at 0. So we're evaluating, and this is the way you'd write it, at 2 to 0. Okay, so let me move this out of the way here. Uh, so really that becomes 2 cubed over 3 plus some constant minus 0 cubed over 3 plus some constant. Well, what happens with the constants? The constant, so we have a plus constant here, and then we have minus, well, the constant's inside here, so it's going to be minus this constant, so these cross out. So really, what this simplifies to being is, let me erase all this stuff, is 2 cubed over 3 minus, in this case, 0 cubed over 3, whatever the lower value is, right? So 0 cubed over 3 is just 0. So in this case, it's really easy. It's just 2 cubed over 3 minus 0. So 2 cubed is 8. So it becomes 8 thirds is the area under this curve, okay? Now, so we're going to do x squared. They could enter in x squared, and these two numbers they can enter in. We can also do uh, x cubed. Eh, eh, x to basically any power they can think of. We're going to write this program for. So let's say that instead here we had x to the fifth power. Well, we're going to follow the same pattern with the antiderivative. So it's going to be x to the sixth power over uh, 6, right? Because then we bring down the 6, 6 over 6 cancels out, and we have x to the 5th, right? I'm hoping you're picking up on this. And um, with the values here, let me get my eraser again. So whatever the values are is whatever we'd evaluate it to. So let's say this was, I don't know, 5. Oh, no, let's pick a different number. Let's pick 7. And let's pick five, uh, no, four. I keep wanting to pick five. I want to keep the numbers a little different so you can see. So this would be evaluated from seven to four. So we'd have seven to the sixth power over six minus uh, four to the sixth power over six. And then we probably want to put these in the calculator because that would be a pretty big number minus another fairly decent number um, to figure it out. Okay. But luckily we're going to write a Python program to do all this. And we're going to make sure that the, no the user is putting in numbers. Okay. So if any of that was confusing, maybe uh, rewind the video, watch that part again. In this next section of the video, we're going to actually go into creating the actual Python program. And I'm going to do that using a text editor called Emacs. You can use whatever you want. Um, there's multiple ones out there. But uh, I have a pretty simple setup where we're just going to focus on the code. Okay. I hope to see you in the next section. Okay. So now we're at the part of the video where we're going to create our Python program. So the first thing we want to do is take in a user input for the power of x. So we want an input, what is the power of x? And what we want to do is set that to some variable so we can store it. So uh, I'm going to call, call the variable power underscore of underscore x, and set it equal to that input. And now to make sure that we're taking it in correctly, let's just print power of x. Okay, we'll save that program. And let's run eShell here. And we're going to just run Python 3 and then the name of the file, area under curve. What is the power of x? Let's say 3. 
it prints three. Okay. There is a little issue with this program and I'll show you that by running it again. So if we run it again, we say, what is the power of X? And I say something like tree, which is a word, we get tree. So we can't really calculate with a tree. So we want to make sure that this is an integer. So let's exit out of here. And we want to wrap this in an integer and let's save it. And now let's run it again. So we run it again. What is the power of X? Uh, well, uh, three, that would still work. If we run it again and someone types in tree or something silly, or even tries a number like E, we're going to get a traceback error and we get this value error here. So we have to have a try and accept, and we have to account for this value error. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now exit back out of this, and we're going to start with our try. Tab this over. And we want to have accept value error. And um, we want to print something like you must enter an integer. Leave a little space so they could enter an, an integer. Now we can save it. Let's run it again. Okay. So if we run it again, we get what is the power of X? If we enter in three, that's fine. It still works. What is the power of X? We enter an E. We do have, you must enter an integer, but then we get this name error. Name power of X is not defined. So let's take a look at why that's happening. Well, we're trying to enter in an integer, but if we get this value error, we don't set the power of X equal to anything. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to create, put this in a while loop and then have this continue until we get some power of X. So I'm going to go over here. We're going to say while true. Okay. And that'll keep running until we break out of the loop. Okay. So let me show you that in a moment. So right here, we'll just type continue. So if they don't enter an integer, it will go back to the start of the loop and try again. So let's save that. And now let's run E shell. What is the power of X? Let's say we enter an E. You must enter an integer. What is the power of X? Okay, let's enter an integer. We'll enter three. It keeps going. So we're not going to be able to break out of this loop. We have to have something that breaks out. So I'm going to do a keyboard inter interrupt and break out of that loop. Uh, but we also have to have basically an else statement that says break. Okay. So now if we do this, go Alt X, run E shell, and we run our program. Uh, what is the power of X? If we say E, it says you must enter an integer. Let's say I type integer. No, you must actually type a number, <laughs> like a whole number. All right, so four. Okay, so now it breaks out of the loop, it prints four. So it's it's taking in that value. So if we check that, that's good. We want to do that for both the power of X. We want to do it for the lower X value, and we want to do it for the upper X value. So I'm going to go to the start of this line and get rid of that. Uh, and we're also going to do this for our other value. So we're going to say, well, true, try, and we'll do um, lower underscore X underscore value equals one an integer, an input. What is the lower value of X? Okay. We're going to create an exception for a value error if they don't enter an integer and print something like you must enter an integer. Okay. And uh, we're going to have it continue until they do. And then we're going to break when they do. So we're going to break that loop.
So that's the same kind of thing. And we're going to do the same kind of thing for our higher value. So we're going to say while true, we're going to try to get an upper X value, which we want is an integer. And we want to take the user input. So what is the upper value of, move this out of the way, of X. And we want to have an exception for a value error. Print, uh, you must enter an integer. And we'll continue the loop until they do. And when they do, we will break, okay, from that loop. All right, so, all right, so we've got our three user inputs. Now we wanna do something with them, okay? So we wanna have some function that does something with them. So I'm gonna to go to the start of the document and we're gonna create a function which is going to uh, tell us what the value of the integral is, which is basically the area under that curve, as we explained in the first part of the video. So to create a function, I'm going to type DEF, which is short for define, and uh, let's call it integral, integral underscore value. Let's pass in a low value, uh, a high value, and a power, okay? And uh, I'm going to create a little doc string here and say this uh, function calculates the area under a curve. Okay, and uh, so we're going to first, if we remember back, we have the high value, the antiderivative minus the low value. So we want to first figure out what the low value and the high value is, and then subtract the low value from the high value. So let's start with the low value. You can start with the high value if you want. Uh, we can say the low val of the integer equals the low val that we pass in raised to, remember we raised the power by one. So we're gonna take the power and we're gonna add, if I can spell it correctly, power plus one and we're going to divide all that by the power plus one, because remember, we had to have that uh, for like, like, for instance, x squared, the antiderivative of x squared was x cubed. We raised the x to a power over three. So over the power plus one. So we're going to do that for the high value of the integer as well, which is going to be the high val raised to power plus one divided by the power plus one. And uh, then the total value is gonna be the high uh, value uh, integer minus the low value of the integer. Okay, and then at the end, we're just going to return the total value, okay? So that's our function that we've created. Okay, um, we also, probably at the start of the program, we wanna print what the program does. So I'm going to print um, something like, this program takes the power of x, um, put a comma here, and then we'll print another line uh, for a curve y equals x to a power. It also, and we'll print, uh, takes a um, low and high value of x for the range of the curve and calculates the area under the curve. Okay, that might be a little bit of a run on, but we're explaining what the uh, program does, okay? So 
Now, let's go down to the bottom of the program and we'll say something like the overall value equals the integral value function when we take the low val and we pass in the lower x val value, the high val, oops, just high val, and we pass in the upper x value. Uh, and then we take for the power, we pass in the power of x variable. Okay. And then we print something like uh, the total value of the integral is and then plus the string we'll round it uh, to two places so we'll take the overall value round it to two places and um, concatenate on uh, square units because it is an area okay so <clears throat> We've got our program, so let's open eShell and let's run it. Uh, okay, so it explains the program. What is the power of x? Let's say 2. What is the lower value of x? Let's say 0. What is the upper value of x? Let's say 2. And we get one error. Um, got an N unexpected keyword argument, high val. Okay, so line 41. So sometimes this happens. So let's just take a look at our function here. Ah, we typed in high value. And we, I meant to type in high value. So. so let's save it again and let's run it. Okay. So let's put in two, let's put in zero for lower value, two for the upper value. And it gives us a total value of the integral is 2.67 square units. Okay, that's eight thirds. So it works, all right? Um, and I've tested this for other values as well, but yeah, the program works, but there's still a few issues. So, what I want to take a look at is uh, the upper value. So if I go down here in the program, uh, there's nothing in this that keeps the uh, user from entering a lower x value for the upper value than the upper value. So I could type in zero and then type in negative one. That wouldn't really make any sense in the context of this program. So someone could type in a lower value. So we want to uh, factor that in and take that into account and handle that. So we could say if upper x value is lower than or equal to because we want it to be actually higher. We want it to be greater than the lower x value. Well, then what we could do is we could print uh, the upper x value must be greater than the lower x value. And then after that, we could continue to the start of the loop. All right, so let's try this. So now we'll save it and we'll run it, okay? So let's do five this time. What is the lower value of x? Let's do six. What is the upper value of x? Let's do four. It says the upper value of x must be greater than the lower x value. So let's try again, let's enter eight, okay? And then it gives us um, the total value of the integral rounded to two decimal places. So our program, works now and it takes into account um, that we're, uh, we have to enter in a higher X value than the lower X value, okay? Um, let's exit out of this for a moment. Now, let's say we want our program to add a little bit of attitude 
if the person isn't entering in an integer. So to do that, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the top here and I'm going to create uh, a few index variables. So one is P underscore X underscore index. I'll set that equal to one. Then we'll do L underscore X underscore index. We'll set that equal to one. And then U underscore X underscore index, which we'll set equal to one. Okay. And so now we'll have some if and elif statements uh, before we actually break. So we'll say if p underscore x underscore index, if that equals two, that means that they, uh, oh, one more thing. We have to, every time we get a value error, they don't enter an integer, we'll increase this index by one, okay? So now, if it equals two, that means they the first time they didn't enter an integer, the second time they did. And we'll print something a little snarky, like uh, it's about time you entered an integer, okay? Uh, now we'll also have an elif statement. So we'll say if this variable uh, equals three, meaning that it took two times where they entered in something besides an integer, uh, we'll print something like, took you long enough. Is that always like to add a space there just in case it kind of get, doesn't really matter. But, um, and then if it's, let's say if it's greater than three, we'll print something like, wow, just wow. Finally, <laughs> something like that in our program. Okay. Um, so, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that for the other parts. So for this other else statement, so we'll scroll down. Uh, so we'll say if uh, lower underscore X underscore index, if that equals two. Now you could change this up and um, make it different things. I'm just going to keep it the same. It's about time you entered an integer. Okay, and we'll have an elif. If that equals three, print took you long enough. And another elif statement. Uh, this is greater than three. We'll print something like wow. Just wow. Finally, I, I, I mixed it up a little bit there with a comma in there. And then we'll go down to the last one here. And we have to go down to our else because we have a little bit more with this one. We'll say if u underscore x underscore index, if that equals two, we're going to print, uh, it's about time you entered an integer. We'll have an elif, uh, this u underscore x underscore index. If that equals three, we'll print took you long enough. And then we'll have one more elif, which is just that this is greater than three and something along the lines again of wow. Seriously, wow. Finally. So I, I mixed it up a little bit with what I said, but not, not a ton. So now let's run this program. So we'll run it. Uh, let's say we enter an E. You must enter an integer. Let's enter a two. It's about time you entered an integer. What is the lower value of X? Let's enter in tree. Uh, you must enter an integer. integer. Let's enter in bark. 
You must enter an integer. Let's enter in <laughs> dog. You must enter an integer. Let's enter in three. Uh, and so something happened there. Okay, so I'm going to keyboard break and let me go see what I wrote. So uh, let's exit here. And that was the lower value. So what was that elif condition? Ah, so what did I miss in these two? Well, I forgot to be adding. So I have to take my underscore x underscore, or sorry, l underscore x underscore index, and we have to add one. Okay, so I forgot to do that there, and I think I forgot to do it here as well. So we'll do u underscore x underscore index plus equals one. So you got to include that. Okay, otherwise it's not gonna give back any response because it's not adding any, it's gonna stay at one. So let's run the eShell and let's run the program. So let's just enter an integer here. What is the lower value of X? Let's enter in tree. Uh, then let's enter in bark. Then let's enter in leaves. And we must enter an integer, fine, I'll enter in three. That says, wow, just wow. Finally, what is the lower or, or upper value of X? Let's enter in um, yes. Then let's enter in uh, no. Now let's enter in six. Okay, took you long enough. Uh, and then it says the total value of the integral is 303.75 square units. So that's basically how you add a little attitude to the program. So. In this video, it's pretty cool. We went over how to find the area under a curve, and then we created a Python program that did that, that handled uh, user input and only let them enter what we wanted to enter, and then gave them a little feedback if they weren't doing that, and we had to loop through a few times to get it. So uh, I hope you found this interesting. I found this project really fun to do. Uh, if you did find it interesting, I'd love to do more projects like this for my YouTube channel. It's really fun. And uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Also, if you want to look in the description and check out my social media links, uh, you can do that and follow me on the social platforms if you wish. And I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.